and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're going to actually work with our repository and make some changes and get them out to the remote. So we're going to learn a few commands or review a few commands if you already know them. But essentially, if we did a quick ls-al, we can see that the only thing that we have here is a license in the readme. We could modify either one of those and we would be able to then push the file changes up or we can create our own file to work with. It really doesn't matter. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to quickly create a new file. I can do that with the touch command, and we'll just call it anyfile.txt. And I can, you know, work with that file then from that point forward. The actual easiest way to do this now would be to open all this in code. So I'm just going to say code dot, which opens this in code. Again, if you can't use the code dot command from your path, you could just open Visual Studio Code to the folder. So if you browse to the folder on your machine, you would be able to right click on that folder and do the show more options and select open with code. And that would open this to the code window as well. Or you could just open Visual Studio Code and browse to the folder. Either way, it doesn't matter. So you make some changes. So this is a new file that I've changed. Now obviously this isn't code, but at some point you would. Now I could go back to the bash command and run it from here. Uh, however, once I'm in code, it actually is a little easier at this point to just start working with the terminal within code. So I'm going to open a new terminal inside of code, and then I will switch to bash here. And we'll see that I'm in the developer, you know, C projects first repository on main there as well. So I'm going to make this a little bigger. And that should be easy enough to see for everybody. So now if I just said get status, we'll see that I have a new untracked file called anyfile.txt. So right now that's in the untracked state. So I want to stage it. So I'm going to say get add. And I can do anyfile.txt, which is a safer way to do things when you're adding. Or if you just do get add with a dot, it will add all of the files, including untracked files, that have had changes or modifications. So that's a little bit less safe. So there's a couple camps there. Either way, you're going to be able to add. It's probably safer to add the single file, but get add dot will add everything. Once you do that, if you run the get status again, you see that now it's moved into this uh, status of being ready to be committed. It's actually added to the index or staged. And once I do that, I can go ahead and say git commit and with dash m, which gives me a message, I can say added a new file called any file.txt. I do my get status one more time. I see that I have one commit ahead of origin main. Use git push to publish your local commits. So I'm going to go ahead and get, well, let's, let's clear this. I'm going to go ahead and clear this. And then I'm going to say git push. And that will push my changes up to GitHub. So then I look at my GitHub repository. If I refresh this, I should see any file.txt, and there it is. This is a new file that I've changed. I can validate that that came in on the last commit, which was on a commit that said added a new file called any file.txt. I see that I have two commits in my history. The initial commit added a new file called any file. We can track these commit details over here, the SHA or the hash or the SHA1, however you want to call that. And if you did a git log over here, you would see that those SHAs match the first six or seven characters and ultimately uh, the messages are there. And a git log dash dash one line will just show in a much more succinct manner. You see there's the two commits B6BB1EF and 728257E. Of course, if you're trying to track with this, your commits would be completely different. Those are mathematical calculations based on a whole bunch of things. So your files have likely have much different commits there. But as long as they're tracking, we know that we've done everything we needed to do. And if I decided to change the readme, I could add a real quick change here to an existing file. I can say modified modifications. And we'll say one. Here, let's make this a little smaller now so we can see it. The first one that I did was I added a new any file.txt. The second one that I did was I modified the readme.md file. Save that. If I do my get status one more time, we'll see now that I have a modified file 
git add. And in fact, now I can, since this is already a tracked file, I can just do a git commit dash am, which will add and give me a message. And this is modified the readme and get push to move that up to GitHub. And then of course, one last time, just validating we have the commits, the modified the readme. If I go back to the main page, you see there's the modifications that I added with the changes to the readme in the last modification, modified the readme file on that last commit. So everything is tracking the way that we expected it to. We see we can add files and push them up. We can modify files and push the changes up. So we are now working with our repository as expected. And that'll do it for this video. Thank you very much. We'll see you.